Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I appreciate your time. My name is Troy Davis. I'm VP of Sales for NOcean here in North America. We're going to run through some of the IoT devices and applications that are in use today. So first of all, who is NOcean? Uh, well, we're the world leader in self-powered IoT solutions. Um, what does self-powered mean? Well, we'll get a little bit more in depth in that in a moment, but the, uh, the key to it is that we are offering uh, devices that use energy from their environment to power themselves. So we hope to avoid using batteries in most of our products by self-powering these different devices. Uh, we've been in business since 2003. We're in about a million buildings around the world. We do have worldwide activity um, and a strong uh, patent portfolio with over 100 patents. Um, so I'm going to run through this fairly quickly because we're short on time today and I want to make sure that we get through all of it um, and cover some details. So here are some component level devices um, that, that customers could choose, manufacturers could choose to em, uh, embrace those and embed them into their products and, and create an NOcean enabled solution. Um, but for what we're talking about today is all this lower stuff, which is all the finished products, the actual sensors and switches and IoT data producers that would go into uh, a finished building or a, a space. Uh, and so, okay, how do we self-power things? Well, when, when we've got uh, something that we interact with, like uh, a light switch, for example, or a customer service call button, maybe a, a bus stop button, um, or some other indicator that where we need to uh, uh, touch something, then we use kinetic energy. And we use a magnet and coil assembly. Um, it's not piezo like your barbecue lighters. Um, this is a much more durable uh, device um, that, that can sustain many, many hundreds of thousands of, of uh, applications or uses. Um, and then when we don't interact with the device, we use solar energy. So solar typically associated with outside. Um, we do use the sunlight when it comes in through windows and different things in buildings. Uh, but for the most part, our devices are powered by the electric lights in the space. So similar to your old uh, solar powered calculators um, that would sit on your desk and, and only work when the lights were on, uh, that's kind of the same idea, but we've in, uh, enhanced the technology now to be able to do uh, occupancy sensing or temperature, humidity, light level, CO2, a whole variety of things. Um, and then thermal energy, we use heat differentials to power some different devices, but we won't be talking about those today. So why do we want to reduce batteries? Well, of course, the waste is a huge factor, right? And that's, and that's where we can all have this feel-good uh, part of this, that we're, that we're not wasting, batter or, you know, wasting landfill space and batteries and pollution and all that stuff. But ultimately, it comes down to life cycle cost of the entire s installed solution. So the first battery is cheap. It goes in the factory. Uh, some worker puts it in there, and, it, and it's 20 cents, and it goes out with the product. And really, it's you know two, three, four, five years later uh, that that next cost comes into play, which is the the person has to make an appointment, has to bring out a ladder and a truck and the twenty cent battery and install it. So this is where your costs really go through the roof. Um, so how do we do it? How do we install it? Well, these different sensors and different things can be deployed independently and have uh, an, uh, a total separate infrastructure to collect the data. But the most common way is to connect it to um, your Wi-Fi infrastructure. So for example, you can plug a USB stick into your Aruba access points, of which there are tens of millions around the world that are eligible for this uh, firmware update and, um, and be able to support the USB stick. We bring the sensor data into that USB stick. It then goes through what's called the Zero Trust security platform and out to the cloud. So it stays completely off of your corporate network, which is really good news for those who are, are concerned about uh, security and different parts. This is all handled by Aruba. We don't handle any of the security portion of that from once it hits the access point out to the cloud. So a quick application uh, guide here, so or example. Um, we've got, uh, we can do, of course, uh, occupancy, right, PIR sensors, just to determine if the room is occupied or unoccupied. This can go back to um, any sort of applications that might do room booking or uh, real estate activity or real estate asset management. So how often do we use that room? You know, do we need to remodel it into something we'll use more often, or do we use it too much and we need to make another one? Um, those kind of things. So we have ceiling PIRs, wall PIRs. We can also do light level, uh, CO2, temperature relative humidity um, to feed back information to the to the HVAC system if you need to we can also do noise level uh, there's a variety of different things we can do there 
We can look under the desk and see if there's motion at the feet so that you know that uh, flexible desk situations where you need to know if someone's actually sitting at a desk or not, uh, that's all available. And we can track actual chair vibration to see uh, if people are in those chairs or not. We can check and see if a door or window is open or closed, and we can have a service call button, meaning uh, the cleaning crew needs to go and deal with that so that can be communicated effectively. So the actual hardware being installed, I'll let you run through this at your convenience, but uh, here are the, the basics of it. Ceiling and wall sensors, we've got two styles of ceiling sensors, one wall sensor, and then we have a sub-desk sensor. All the details are here, I'll let you go through that at your leisure. And then uh, the EPACU, this is our people activity counter. This is contributes to, um, sends data to the software um, in order to allow you to create a heat map um, and estimate the number of people or at least estimate the uh, strength of activity in that space. Is it crowded, is it not crowded, that type of thing. Um, and then our EMSIU, this is our multi-sensor, kind of the, the Swiss Army knife of what we do. Um, it's self-powered uh, completely. It mounts to the back of a chair, or sits on a desk, and it's got an accelerometer. It's got temperature, humidity, light level. Um, it also has a built-in magnet contact if you need to see if uh, some sort of panel is being opened or door or something like that. There's a lot of variety of uses to provide data to your software via this, this device. Um, so in summary, I'm going to leave this uh, for you to read. It's a lot of words, and uh, you can pause it here and, and really jump into this. I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, but data sheets can be found at the easyfitcontrols.com. EasyFit is the an ocean brand of finished products. So that's available for you. And uh, then this is your uh, contact. So this is our uh, field application engineering support. These are all U.S.-based people. Um, and we've got a team here that's constantly expanding. And we also have a team in Europe uh, to support all of our European activities and different things throughout the world. So I appreciate your time today. I'm going to cut it off here and uh, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Troy Davis listed here on this screen. Thanks. Have a great day.